Okay, so it's been a while since I checked out the Pixel 6 and checked out what's new with it. It's been about four months or so since we reviewed it and I actually just got the final build of Android 13 on the Pixel 6, but I also have a different Pixel 6 device that's running Android 12, so let's talk about what's different. Now, if you didn't know, the Pixel 6 is my go-to Android device, whether I use it as my primary phone or my secondary phone when I travel. This has always been my go-to because of the camera and the simplicity of that stock Android feel. Plus the overall size, the flat display, and just how everything feels is what I'm looking for in an Android device. Sure, it's not perfect and the battery life could be a little bit better, but it's not really a deal breaker for me. And just to go over some of the basic things that I've experienced since the updates hit, battery life on the Pixel 6 seemed to not have changed much. I'm still getting about four and a half, maybe five hours of screen on time with regular usage and some gaming. Now, overall stability seems to be a lot better with Android 13 on the Pixel 6. In my opinion, the fingerprint scanner is just a tad bit faster than before. And of course, a ton of bug fixes all around for the Pixel 6, 6 Pro and 6A. Although in terms of performance, in my opinion, the Pixel 6 with Google Tensor has always been pretty good. I really didn't have any issues with the phone overheating or ran into any issues with, you know, drop frames or lagging whenever I'm gaming. Some apps did crash every so often, but that might just be an issue with the app itself and not the Pixel 6. But yeah, what's new with Android 13 and how's it been running on the Pixel 6? Now, I will say that while Android 13's only been out for about a week or so officially, Android 13 as a whole isn't all that different from Android 12. It honestly just feels like a minor refinement of Android 12 with some graphical changes here and there, and it's not a complete overhaul in my opinion. But that could change when the Pixel 7 and 7 Pro comes out in a few months. Now, before we check out Android 13 on the Pixel 6, you should definitely check out channel sponsor Dbrand, who just created some pretty neat skins for the Pixel 6, including this Teenage Mutant Ninja Pixel skins, which you might be familiar with if you grew up in the late 80s and 90s, or maybe you want something a little bit more techy with the Something skins, which, well, is probably the coolest skin they have for the Pixel besides this teardown skin that I have on my Pixel 6. But yeah, if you wanna go ahead and pick up your own set of skins for the Pixel 6, 6 Pro, or other tech devices, Check out dbrand by going to dbrand.com slash heymarkl or clicking the first link down below. Okay, so Android 13. I've been running the beta since it came out back in May, but now that Google pushed out the final build, it's time to compare the two. And if you're a Pixel user, here are some of the changes that I noticed personally and what you should expect if you haven't updated yet. Okay, so like I said earlier in the video, visually there's not a whole lot of changes like what we saw at IO. There wasn't really a huge emphasis on a UI overhaul, but since I have a Pixel 6 running Android 12 and one running Android 13, I could easily tell that there's some sort of spacing changes to the home screen and lock screen. So on the lock screen, if you look at both phones side by side, you can clearly see that the spacing between the clock and fingerprint reader is way better on Android 13. So previously the clock was too close to the fingerprint reader on Android Android 12 and I'm just not sure why it was that close. Personally, that just looks terrible. And jumping right into the home screen, the overall home screen just looks more tighter and looks like it's sitting closer to the bottom of the screen, which I'm assuming is Google's way to give users a better one-handed experience. Also, the spacing between the main icons on the home screen and dock is closer together on Android 13, which looks better. And one minor change on the Google search bar at the bottom is that Google Lens icon now features a camera glyph versus an outline of a box with a circle in the middle. Very minor changes there, but something I noticed right away. And then jumping right into the app drawer is when you search something inside the app drawer, you'll actually get more search options, not just Google results like in previous versions of Android, but you can actually search on YouTube, Google Maps, the Play Store, and the Settings app, which is kind of neat. So you kind of have this universal search thing going on, which is definitely nice to see, and something that's on par with Spotlight on iOS. <laughs> Next up, and this one is somewhat minor, and one you probably won't notice when you update is that the navigation bar at the bottom of the screen is now longer and slightly thicker, which is pretty similar to the iPhone, but not as thick or wide as that. I personally love the change, and visually, I think it'll definitely help people that don't have the best eyes. 
Now, another thing that I notice is that in the notification shade, and I don't know if this is gonna change in the future, but on the final build, the buttons for the settings, the power button has been moved to the lower right of the screen, which I think again, favors one-handed use. And also the edit button to change the layout of your quick settings are now on the right side, closer to the lower right of the tile. Now, when you're listening to music, you should also notice that the media playback widget or card on the lock screen looks way bigger. Before, it would just be the card with the play and pause and the rewind and forward button. But on Android 13, you actually have a much better looking card with the album artwork as the background with the app icon on the upper left. And you have access to scrub the playhead right from the lock screen, which is really neat. For whatever reason, we didn't have that option on Android 12, which I'm now thinking, why didn't we not have that in the first place? Overall, it looks better, and the same goes for the notification trays media player. It looks just like the one on the lock screen, which looks more rich, and in my opinion, looks better. Plus, you have access to the playhead. Now, this one is kind of minor and one that's welcomed for sure. And the last thing that I noticed with Android 13 is that you now have more options when you're changing the colors of the UI to match your wallpapers. So in Android 12, you're actually only given four choices for both wallpaper colors and basic colors. In Android 13, you have a ton of choices, which should make customization a lot better. And also, if you want to check out my personal wallpaper packs, I'll leave the store below so you can support me and use the wallpapers that I'm using for this video. And yeah, that's pretty much it. And that's what's new for Android 13 so far. In terms of overall look and feel on the Pixel 6, it's very familiar and the little design changes should make using the phone a lot better. And there will be more refinements and newer features as the months go by with, you know, incremental updates and uh, those Pixel feature drops. I know that Uber and Lyft and I believe a few food delivery services are gonna have rich notifications right on the lock screen with ETA statuses on Android 13. And we'll just have to wait till those go live as well. But yeah, that's pretty much it. We'll have to wait a couple more months until Pixel 7 and 7 Pro hits the market, and maybe then we'll see some Pixel 7 only features paired with Android 13. Anyways, make sure you guys subscribe to the channel because there are a ton more content coming your way, a lot more smartphone reviews, phones that let's just say haven't been announced yet, but we'll talk about that another time. Anyways, thank you all so much for watching, and yeah, I'll catch you all in the next one.